Hi everyone, I'm Sam Langley Swain, and I'm not sure if you can hear all these amazing sounds from all these incredible animals, but I am at Twy Cross Zoo, and I'm here to read my book, What Makes a Lemur Listen, inside the lemur enclosure. I can't wait for you to see it. Just like all ring-tailed lemurs, Maki like to bathe in the yellow sunrise every morning and huddle under the silvery moon every night. But Maki didn't like to listen. No matter what Mama said, Maki always thought that he knew better. He had an answer for everything. Time to eat your breakfast bugs, Maki. But Mama, I'm too full to eat. Stop stink fighting with your sisters, Maki. But Mama, I'm having far too much fun to stop. Quick, cling on to my belly, Maki. But Mama, I'm too big and too clever to be clinging on. Poor Mama was exhausted. Maki, if you want to be in my troop, you have to listen to me and follow my rules, she started to explain. But Maki still wasn't listening. If only I was in my own troop, Maki said to himself. There'd be no rules and I wouldn't have to listen to anyone. And with that, he decided to set off on a big adventure, all by himself, or so he thought. Maki dashed, jumped and leapt across the forest floor without a care in the world. He was free. Then, as darkness began to fall, Maki realised something. He was lost and very far from home. In the dark and quiet, Maki noticed his rumbling tummy. Maybe he should have eaten his breakfast bugs. Maki climbed as fast as he could to the highest branch just to be safe. Then he tried his best to sleep. But the tumbling cold winds blew across the branches. It really wasn't much fun shivering and alone without his sisters to huddle around him. And then Maki heard the grumbling growls of the forest and realised that it wouldn't really matter how big or how clever a lemur was if he didn't have a troop to protect him from predators. He shut his eyes tightly, too afraid to see what might happen next. And he didn't open them until... Maki woke up, safe and sound. Wow, maybe I don't need anyone, he said, feeling pleased with himself. Of course you don't. You're too grown up, remember? Came a very unexpected reply. Maki nearly fell off his branch in shock. He couldn't see anyone else around. Perhaps it was just his imagination. You're probably too full to eat those fruits, the voice continued. Maki looked around again. Still nobody there. But the fruit did look really good. So, in his hunger, he forgot about the voice and stuffed his face with the tasty tamarinds not paying any attention to the prowling fossas passing by below. And I suppose those stepping stones would be too much fun, the voice said a little later. Mackie looked high and low, but soon forgot the voice as he crossed the river, narrowly missing the eagle swooping down for a snack. As night fell once more, Mackie felt pretty good. He wasn't scared or lonely anymore. In fact, he was feeling pretty fearless. So, instead of climbing up high to safety, he settled down on a curvy, low-hanging branch. The voice came again. Imagine if that branch wasn't a branch at all. But you're too big and too clever to be sleeping on a snake. A snake? How funny, thought Maki, opening one eye to see the most enormous snake. Suddenly, run, a rainbow appeared and then disappeared and then reappeared, distracting the dizzy snake while Maki leapt to safety. Thank you, Maki gasped. Wait, your voice. Have you been looking after me the whole time? Maybe he wasn't better off alone. Yes, the chameleon smiled. I'm Safina. Hiding myself was the only way to help you learn to listen. Maki looked very confused. There was a long pause. Okay, but how are you so clever? To find the food? to not get lost, and to know all the dangers in the forest. Safina just smiled. I listen to my mama, she said. Maki smiled. And with his new friend, he set off back towards the Lima troop. Perhaps he was ready for just a few rules after all. The end.